just when you thought things were going well for you, I give you a problem with fractions. Well, we have already discussed how you can clear out fractions, right? If you look at the review that we did for solving linear equations, we talked about how if we can identify the LCD, we just use that to wipe out all the fractions. So here in this problem, your common denominator is 6. So what I can do is I can multiply each of these fractions by 6 over 1. And as long as 6 really is a common denominator, I won't have any fractions left when it's all said and done. So check this out. 3 goes into 6 twice. So this becomes 2 times 1x squared, so that's 2x squared. Here, the 6 reduces with the 6, and I now have plus 7x. And then over here, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and I'm left with 3 times 1, which is 3. So there we go. And now it's just a matter of using that AC method to factor this. And we say the AC method because the lead coefficient is not 1. All right. So off to the side, let's work that out. So a times c is 2 times 3, which gives me 6. And I want to find the factors of 6 that are going to add to give me 7. So the factors of 6 that add to 7 are 1 and 6. And so that's how I'm going to break up that 7x right there in the middle. All right, so we have 2x squared, rewriting the 7x as x and 6x and plus 3. Now I want you to understand something that it doesn't matter if I write x and 6x but then you write 6x and x. The order of those two terms in the middle doesn't matter. What matters is that you have the right numbers and the right signs. So as we've been saying the middle coefficient is positive which means the larger of these two guys matches that sign and then just figure out what this other sign is. Now to end up with a positive 7, this guy must also be a positive, that way positive 6 and positive 1 will give you the positive 7. So we split up the middle term for the purposes of creating a situation where we can use factoring by grouping. So in this first group, we have a common factor of x. If I factor that out, I've got 2x plus, well, let's see, this was x. And if I factor out x, the only thing that's left is 1. I think a lot of students forget that there's supposed to be a 1 there, so be very, very careful when you work this problem. All right. In the second group that leads with a positive, the common factor for 6x and 3 is 3. And that's going to allow us to have the exact same thing left over. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, so 2x. 3 divided by 3 gives us 1. So there's that plus 1. And now since these guys are exactly the same, that's the first part of that factorization, times x plus 3. Now another thing to keep in mind here is that, you know, I'm taking this common factor and writing it in front, but this is multiplication here. So the order of those two factors doesn't really matter. So if you end up writing x plus 3 times 2x plus 1, that's the same thing. It doesn't really matter. And so now, I use that zero factor theorem, so 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x plus 3 equals 0. So solving this shouldn't be too bad. Um, you want to first subtract the 1 and then divide by 2. And again, if you need to show each step, go for it. It doesn't really matter. Over here, the step that you would take to get x by itself is to subtract 3. So even at the very beginning, I know it had fractions, but it also had this had a power of 2. So that power of 2 indicated that we were going to have two solutions. Now unfortunately we did have a lot of fractions so we had to clear out those fractions. And once we did, it's a pretty uh, simple thing to do. You have a trinomial, split up the middle term, factor by grouping, and you apply the zero factor theorem.